and this menu, but I do want to welcome everybody. Um, I want to welcome everyone to Dare to Dream, which are inspirational conversations with chefs like yourself, organized by Satopia Travel. And Satopia specializes in these very, very unique travel experiences hosted by world-class chefs. It's a like full immersion into, the, into their lives, into their minds. Um, I'm Erica, Erica Firpo. I'm a travel journalist. And I am so happy to be part of today's presentation and, and conversation, but I'm more excited to introduce you, who I think everybody knows, Massimo Votura. Hi, Massimo. Hello, okay. hello, everyone. <laughs> you know, I, I think you, you already started, you, you jump right in, and that's one of the things that the world loves about you, is you are incredibly passionate. Um, you are a passionate and very influential chef. You are a passionate storyteller. Um, you are, you're, you're kind you're, you're a very big inspiration to a lot of people. And I know that for the past three months, we've had an opportunity to see a different aspect of you. But today, actually yesterday was kind of the culmination of a very radical journey that you and your team, that you and your team had when it came to Asturia Francescana, because it was closed for three months, correct? Correct. From, uh, since 9th of March was the last uh, connection was uh, the last service in Osteria Francescana, Francesquetta and Maria Luisa. I was uh, actually cooking in Maria Luisa and at 10.30 we received this uh, news that Modena would be since uh, midnight uh, red zone. So everyone was panicking. And um, so uh, I was like, what? You know, because the, the, there was no news, you know. The news was, uh, yeah, there's a very uh, important, uh, you know, flu that, uh, you know, we don't know exactly what it is right now. Yes, it is, yeah, but it start from China. But there was no particular news uh, about that. So we were all having a very low profile attitude about that. And then... You know, red zone. Uh, they decide that the government decide to uh, close uh, every single public exercise uh, in the evening. So I had the restaurant fully booked every lunch. But uh, you, everyone knows how much I care about my team. And I said, uh, "Hey guys, uh, I communicate uh, with uh, with everyone." And uh, yeah, and uh, so uh, I took the decision, probably before everyone else, to close the restaurant to keep the team uh, in safety place, uh, you know, in their homes and, uh, you know, uh, and see, because, uh, you know, I, I immediately, like, it, that was Sunday night. I was here in the kitchen with uh, my wife, Lara, and uh, my daughter, that she was having an aperitivo virtual, you know, uh, with all his friends that I know them uh, since ever. And I was discussing that. That's how kitchen quarantine start, but also my decision for like the, decide to close the restaurant. That was uh, the, the uh, Sunday the 10th. And since then, uh, uh, we were home, we were home. And uh, you know, you as you know, to... I'm always very positive. I always have a good word for, for everyone because I have too much passion and too many ideas all the time that I, I don't have time to speak or talk about other things except for my ideas. And as soon as uh, I took this coronavirus time as uh, an opportunity, uh, to get deep into my passion, to go, you know, the coronavirus, what they did is like, they took off everything. Everything was falling away. And uh, what it remains was just family, our home, and time. And this time was rare and precious. And so day by day, we add the, um, you know, the, 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 you know, we had to do something very, very important from this special time. You think that, you know, I, I was checking history in, a, uh, in history during the, the plague of the beginning of the 17th century and <laughs> the other plague at the, at the middle of 17th century, once Shakespeare wrote beautiful, 
you know, theater, uh, comedy, and the other, uh, Newton uh, wrote uh, the uh, th theory on gravity, you know, these kind of things are very important to know because you have to do something because this is our time. We, I never had time to spend with my family. My daughter was away for five years and now she's locked in the apartment with me. So we decided to create Kitchen Quarantine and just uh, using uh, this time to spread our, uh, to spread some joy, some uh, family life with the world, but also to connect with the team in Dubai, in Los Angeles, in Florence, in uh, Modena, in Maria Luisa, in Franceschetta, and create a, an exercise, a creative exercise called Who Are You? Express yourself and um, show me what you can do or how you can cook um, thinking about the past by looking at the past in a very critical way, never in a nostalgic one, to bring the best from the past into the future. And thinking about what the Beatles did with Surgeon Pepper's Lonely Art Club Band. So during these three months of quarantine, we did so many things, so many things every day, you know, like we fill our life with uh, ideas and, uh, but not just words, but action. Like, for example, one for everything. We open uh, uh, the Refettori in Merida. We keep uh, evolving the project that we have on feeding the people in need and the project of Food for Soul. So we open the Refettori in Merida. On the other, on the other side, uh, you know, we, we had the news that uh, an ambulance was crashing in an accident. Uh, and uh, so what we did, we use uh, social media to raise money and, and uh, in like in three days, we raised 72.5 thousand euro and we bought a new brand new ambulance for the Red Cross, you know. So these kind of things, one after the other, after the other, after the other. And at the end, we won, uh, me, Alexa, and one iPhone, we won a Webby Award. That's so, right. You guys won the, the, the special interest yeah. Webby Award for Kitchen yeah. Quarantine. Yeah. And I think one of the things about Kitchen Quarantine was that it really, you really just brought people into daily life with you. And it just, I, I would, my, I would make my husband, we'd turn on at eight o'clock at night and it felt like we were having, you know, just hanging out with you guys. And it, it, sometimes we didn't do it every night, but when we needed a break from each other and our yeah. family, we, we went into your family. And yeah, was, no, no, no. I understand. I understand because a uh, lot of people are telling me that, you know, even all the old, like 100% of the table, they arrive in Osteria Francescana, you know, and there are people from Emilia Romagna because, you know, like we cannot travel through regions, etc. Uh, from tomorrow, yes. But a lot of, uh, like 100% of the people, they say, oh, by the way, kitchen quarantine was the best thing ever during the quarantine because we were connected. Even we were like very down or we were in a blue state of mind, all right? We were watching Kitchen Quarantine and you were make us laugh. Charlie and his pyjama, Alexa and her life, uh, the positive attitude of Lara, or like uh, your, your way of thinking about the food and uh, open the refrigerator and clean everything. I said to the my my team uh, of Food for Soul, that is more Food for Soul kitchen quarantine than any other project. Because it was like the real way, the real positive attitude to buy and to shop for what you need and keep the refrigerator always clean. At Saturday night, we have the cleaning day and for cooking the leftover. You know. So I'm I'm curious, how was it, how did it feel to go from being in the house to being back at Osteria Francescana? Because it's what, yeah, it's been no 24 idea. hours? How, I, I forgot how tough this job was. You know, it, it's 20, it's a 36 hour, three service, I did three service, lunch, dinner, and lunch today. And, you know, my body is destroyed. You know, it's like so tough, you know, after three months just cooking home, you know, it was tough, you know, every day, 
uh, Alexa was filming, uh, we were doing all the prep, but you know, stand up on your feet from nine in the morning till we close, talk with people, um, bring uh, the energy, talk about the menu, explain everything. It was like, whoa, that's, that's because everyone is asking a piece of you. So well, how, how is it, how is it being back with the team again? Uh, it was the best feeling ever, you know, it's like the first thing we did, we, even if we couldn't, uh, we hug each other. We really hug each other because what I did is like the first thing I, we, I didn't open uh, since the beginning because uh, we were able to open uh, since Monday, the 19, I think. And but they decided to keep two weeks uh, closed to see how the infection was going on. And uh, as soon as I've seen that, that the curve was going down and down and down, I said, okay, it's time to open. So first of all, I did, uh, I, uh, I paid for an insur insurance for all my team, all the people of my team. Then uh, uh, I did, um, uh, I organized uh, a screen uh, with the test, uh, a test everyone, everyone was negative, And that was a very important yeah. uh, positive energy because uh, you know, like uh, I said, okay, so the guys did the right thing and they did the great quarantine. So they keep, they kept them uh, in a safe place and um, like that. Then uh, I organized the whole uh, hair system to evolve the air system. So I installed oh. all this machine to sanitize uh, all the, the air that we were, we will, would breathe every day, you know? And so all these uh, things, uh, I did all these things with, uh, with the team, uh, with, uh, for, for the team and for the guests. Then uh, we, one of the, one of the uh, women who works for Food for Soul uh, created a new association uh, that is called AIW, so Association for, um, in, uh, to, to help uh, problematic women, women who have a very problematic life, uh, to integrate into society. And um, instead of, uh, the first approach was to teach them to cook. So to teach them a work, how do you work in a, in a professionally in, a, in a cooking, you know? And, um, but as soon as we had uh, this uh, coronavirus and we have the lockdown, um, they're like, uh, there's um, this company who gave uh, to the association uh, all these uh, mas machines and they were making masks. So they start making masks. Uh, they teach them uh, a couple of, uh, uh, how can I say, tailors. They teach them uh, how to use the machine and they start making masks for the, for, the, for the people, you know, because we were like, but uh, at one point, uh, the, the good news spread very, very fast. And Gucci starts sending uh, some uh, fabric, uh, other companies, other fabric. So there, were, there are all these uh, amazing, super stylish masks made by these women, African women. It, it's amazing, you know, one after the other, after the other. Just well, I think keep that, the positive uh, attitude and you, you make, you can change the world. Well, I think that's what, I think it's that you are really infectious <laughs> and, and your positive attitude is what helps. I, I, I really do believe it's a catalyst. I'm the to, virus. <laughs> yeah, you are, you're, you're, but you're a good virus. <laughs> Now, I'm, I'm curious because I know that, you know, you, you mentioned it in the very, very beginning. You talked about the Beatles and I particularly love, I don't think I'm the only one here who loves Sgt. Peppers. Yeah. So I would love to know a little bit more about the menu and, um, and I'm, I'm wondering if it's psychedelic. I've seen, I've, I've talked to Alexa who told me that it's really beautiful. The dishes are beautiful, but I want to know from you. They're beautiful. A little bit. They're beautiful. Uh, you know, the first week, I spent the first week to organize all the, the vinyl that I have. I have 20,000 vinyls in the room, in the music room. So once I arrive at the, um, I, and, and, uh, but uh, during the, the day, I receive a lot of phone calls from all my friends. And um, for, and I was receiving these um, strange messages, you know, everyone was telling different stories. 
and uh, imagine different scenario at the opening. But I always had in mind that uh, in the after th uh, the, all this time spent in family, cooking, uh, home cooking, you know, even if the custard or the chocolate pudding or the bechamel or the lasagna, they were like perfectly made, you know, we were tired of home cooking. We were tired of cooking as uh, my grandmother. So I thought, I thought, we had to break everything and uh, create something extremely special. As, you know, moving the Beatles, uh, it, it, this idea came out of, uh, like moving all the records from the Beatles in another section. Uh -huh. And I saw Sgt. Pepper. So Sgt. Pepper is like, the, it's like, is the, 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 the record. You know, it's not, the Beatles are not, my favorite. If I have to pick one, I would pick Highway 61 of Bob Dylan. But Bob Dylan is one, you know. Riker Rolling Stone is Riker Rolling Stone, the best song ever created in history. But, you know, and uh, it was like changing everything, like from folk to rock and uh, amplifier and distortion. And, but it was, is one. The Beatle is a team. And I always thought Francescana is a team. It's not me, it's not about me. So I start pushing all my team to study and to uh, research on uh, Sgt. Pepper, what they did. So that was amazing. The result was so good. So what I did, I just put together, I was like the tailor who was sewing one idea to another, to another, to another, and create the perfect effort, even more perfect than Sgt. Pepper. Because Sgt. Pepper, Wait a it's, a, it's, a, it's a record that it's amazing for like, it's a historic record. But there are two songs, like one is Good Morning, Good Morning, or When I'm 64. Mm -hmm. They are kind of, mm, okay. But the Beatles recorded two other songs that strawberry feels together, uh, strawberry feels forever, and uh, and uh, um, uh, well, okay, I'm uh, kind of uh, I miss the other song, and and but I'm uh, coming, I'm coming back in like two minutes, because I'm I'm already thinking what I have to say. So um, there are two incredible masterpieces, but they kept it out of the album because at that time. A uh, few of the most beautiful songs of the vinyl, uh, they were kept. They were kept out because they were singles to release after the album. So uh, both of those songs they became number one. And so, but if you think about Sgt. Pepper plus those two and and take off yeah, uh, Good Morning, Good Morning, and uh, so you know we were thinking about that kind of stuff. We were thinking about moving Yellow Submarine in there and, uh, and, and, uh, and rethinking about Yellow Submarine. We were moving uh, um, a, a little, you know, small, look, this is uh, the, 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 the things, you know, or connected one and another passion that I have that is contemporary art, like, uh, like uh, and, uh, and Damien Hirst's idea of who's afraid of green, yellow, uh, blue and uh, and orange, uh, so it's like all these butterfly. They were flying everywhere, you know. And and uh, those that that piece that piece of art now is in the main room of Franciscana, and is uh, is telling us the joy is bringing joy to the people. They are coming in and enjoy a meal in Franciscana. Is all around beauty is all around because beauty is something so special that really can change the world. You cannot make a revolution using beauty. So this is Camus and it's not me, but one day the revolution will need beauty. So what we did, we create beauty. And the whole aesthetic of these dishes is just amazing. Psychedelic in our way. The three little bites of the opening are three pills, like psychedelic pills, 
you know, LSD. But they're like the essence of what it is, of what it was, the quarantine. One, the rose one is the project of uh, um, Association for Integration of Women. Is a rose pills with uh, a rose, a red beads, and uh, the mold from the gorgonzola. So like very mm -hmm. psychedelic in the palette. Mm -hmm. The second one is the green one. Peas, um, um, cucumber, salziki sauce. And it's all green. And it's, uh, it's about Earth Day. Because, uh, you know, one of the things, there are three things that are very important in this quarantine. One is uh, now we look at the sky and the sky is so big, it's beautiful. There's no more smog as uh, there was before. So this is a positive thing. Another positive thing is the art of the people. The most sensible people, uh, you know, they're like really understood. They went deep into themselves and understood the, you know, the precious time that we live. And uh, I think after quarantine, we all better people than before. And the third, I connected with my daughter. So it's like after five years that she was living in uh, Washington, she came back to work because she, uh, she decided to accept an offer from uh, a local company. And, uh, you know, and, uh, and then, but it was a lockdown and there was a lockdown. So she got stuck into the, our apartment with us. And, uh, you know, I left her in Washington, she was 18. Now she's back 23. And, uh, and we got connected and together we did what we did. So this is, uh, this is the second one, Earth Day. And the third one is Italy. So you have a rose, a green and a yellow. Okay. The yellow for me is the light. Yellow is the monochrome, the, the Renaissance painters they were using in the in the canvas, uh, painting all yellow to give deepness in the proportion and lot of lights. I think uh, the key word is light, the light that uh, we have inside. The light uh, is uh, is about future. It's about positive. It's about so many things. So we decide to keep the yellow peel as the last one. And it's all about uh, carrots, uh, lemon zest, uh, ginger, um, very pungent flavor. And it's the strongest flavor because it's the most important flavor. You know, I think a lot of the, the positivity and the soulfulness that you described and just that single pill is a lot of what you also bring into Food for Soul, yes. what you bring into Il Tortellante. And I don't know if a lot of, if I, I've had the experience of being Tortellante, Rodo, brava. Right? It's also the yellow is like, the, the yellow is the <laughs> color of the hand, uh, handmade egg pasta that Tortellante does every day. And I think I, 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 I don't think a lot of people have had a chance to be front row to what Food for Soul is and what Il Tortellante is. And I'd love for you to, to tell everybody a little bit about those two projects. Uh, Food for Soul is a, a, a project that, that uh, we did at the Universal Exposition in the beginning. No, the first project was at the Universal Exposition when the Milan Expo uh, theme was uh, Feed the Plan. So, the, all the government uh, were like, were, they were asking me to get involved in different uh, scenarios, uh, but the, they never asked me what I was thinking about Free the Planet. So I decided to Free the Planet my own way, involving all my friends, the chef, that they are people that usually love to give, you know? And, uh, um, and uh, what we needed, it was like, we needed people that could communicate to the world this project. Feed the Planet was a, a, a reflection about numbers. Uh, we produce food for 12 billion people. We are 7 billion people on Earth. We waste 
33% of the production and there are 860 million people, they don't have anything to eat. So for me, the feed the planet means, first of all, fighting food waste. Then I decide to create this beautiful space, thanks to architects, designers, artists. So, because uh, as I was telling you before, beauty is extremely important uh, uh, things to, for life and for future, to rebuild the dignity of the people. Everybody needs to be surrounded by beauty. So the beauty of a beautiful plate, the beauty of amazing chairs and tables, the beauty of, of art, the beauty of the architecture. Um, Pope Francis said to us, no, don't create this project under the train station. It's too dark, it's downtown Milan. Let's bring uh, light to the periphery of, people, uh, the, of uh, Milan because the periphery of people is the, way, the place where they need more light. So we brought a beautiful project. We brought light into the periphery, the most neglected neighbor in Milan, and we built our first uh, soup kitchen. The still is one of, uh, no, more than ever, is one of the key things in Milan. Is, now, a, is a soup kitchen who still use all the leftover, all the, 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 the food, the surplus food that the uh, supermarket has the, and donate to us to feed the people in need. It's close to the refugee house, is the place where a lot of homeless are, uh, very near train station, so it's, it's incredible. And, and now, now you have one in London, Paris, uh, Rio? We have nine now, nine. Uh, one in uh, Modena, Bologna, Naples, Milan, uh, Paris, London, uh, Rio de Janeiro, Merida. And, and we are building uh, one in New York. In New York. Yeah. And in this period, you know, I think, I think one of the things that I find amazing is that you, you had an idea that was so local that became so global. Yeah, but, but because it's like, it's the idea it's that my, mother, my grandmother, uh, you know, was like, was keeping telling me. I couldn't leave the table if I didn't finish the plate and the food that I brought at the table in my plate. So this is a very simple idea. It's basic I, I transfer this idea to my team. You know, we are uh, 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 seven, just in Francescano for 28 covers, we are 75 people working there. So we, we, create, we create every day amazing food, but we have a lot of leftover. And the leftover, it's up to the people at the preparation to create amazing meal for this as a staff meal. You know, this is what, what it is. It's like giving the example, uh, share this idea of fighting food waste through knowledge, consciousness, sense of responsibility. So this is what it is. It's a project who wants to fight food waste and social isolation. It's a, it's, a it's a community, and I think that that's another thing. So I came and I visited Utortalante in October. Yeah. And, and uh, so there's this whole macro world of Massimo Bottura, and then there's the micro world, and that's Modena. And Tortelante was a very, it, it's very even more micro than possible. But um, what I found was it's completely community fostering with the idea of helping special needs kids, but it's not just that. I mean, I, I saw women- and, and grandmothers. Yes, that's what together I love. Third age and the special need kids. So the grandmothers, they don't know what to do with themselves. You know, they have this secret magic recipe for the best pesto. And now they can show how good they are. And instead of transfer this pesto, this magic portion uh, to the kids, to the, so to the daughters, because they are too busy mm, to get successful in life, they can transfer to the kids, the special need kids, that after 19, they don't know what to do with themselves. Because, uh, and so this is another inclusive project. I exactly. love the word inclusive, inclusive project. Because the word inclusive is like means welcome, is exactly what we do every day in Osteria. Buongiorno, benvenuti, venite qua. 
uh, this is like the way we approach you know, to people. So this is the way uh, you build your own future. So these kids now, they have a home, they have a job, they have something to do even more than what they want because Charlie is complaining all the time because we have, uh, they have a lot of, too much work to do. And, but at the end of the day, they are selling the tortellini and they are part and they are a very important part of the uh, society. Because, some t- because at the end of the session, they can share a little bit of the tortellini for their, their families. So they're bringing home uh, tortellini and they are the, the main actors of the evening because the, the whole family uh, will eat the tortellini that these kids made. You know, I'm, I'm not surprised that this is happening with you and I'm not surprised it's happening in Modena because Emilia Romagna itself is like, to me, it's the, it's the land of comfort food. It's where e- prosciutto, lambrusco, balsamico, parmigiano, it's where every, everything that's amazing of Italy comes from. And I, I mean, and, and I know my nonna would kill me because she's from Rome and she would say, you can't say that, but it's true. But I agree with you. <laughs> but I agree with you. You know, you... Because, because this food and this uh, prep and this product are the results of centuries and centuries of tradition. It's not by chance that lasagna, ragù, tortellini, and made egg pasta are there and they are known everywhere in the world. Prosciutto, parmigiano, balsamic vinegar, they're all from here. Yeah. So the most successful product in the in probably in the world they're from here so it's like this is uh, the essence of what it is emilia romagna and italy in general in more general so the you know, essence is, is this and i think that's one of one of the one, one of the most tender moments was so I, I don't know if you remember this i met you in 2012 the week before the uh the earthquake so I came to Austria Francescana and I ate by myself and then I said I don't remember it. Oh but I remember I remember because I, know that I, was. I, I was I was ta- I wanted to say thank you and I also wanted to talk about art and then you said come and meet my wife. You have to meet her. You guys would love to talk about art together. And so we did. But but right after I was there was the earthquake. And one of your responses to the earthquake was so beautiful and so tender. And it was about the one of you know the most I don't want to say the blessed tradition, but probably the most well-known tradition of Emilia Romagna, which is Parmigiano Reggiano. Yeah. You know, 360,000, 360,000 wheels of Parmigiano Reggiano, 40 kilos each, were damaged during that earthquake. There was a very, very, very difficult moment because there was not one shape. It was like going on between uh, the, the 20 of May till 19 of June. So it was like insane at the restaurant too. People were, ma- they were like, Moder- Moderna was like the desert. I know. No one on the street. The, and uh, the hurt was shaking constantly. And uh, another thing that was like, uh, you know, we were, we had reservation and reservation and then out of the blue, the herd was shaking and uh, everything was canceled. So we were prepping and then leave everything like this. It was insane. But at that point, when uh, the community and the consortium Parmigiano Reggiano asked me help to do something very special, a special event, you know, we were thinking about selling more Parmigiano as we can to try to to get some money for the cheese companies. You know, the consortium is one, but is a, is a union of uh, thousands of small oh, micro wow. company of three people. They're making uh, two wheels of Parmigiano every day. And uh, all that shape destroy, uh, almost destroy, damage. Uh, all these wheels, they were owned by all these companies, micro companies. So at that point, I, I start uh, thinking about a recipe that was deeply Italian, cacio e pepe. Cacio in Italian means cheese. Cacio and pepe, and pepe is pepper. But uh, rethought 
uh, redistill by a million. I was going to say. Mind. So instead of using uh, um, uh, pasta, classic pasta, I decide to use uh, rice because uh, Riso Vialone Nano is from uh, what the epicenter of the of the earthquake, Finale Emilia. So I pick the rice, and rice for me is a symbol of hope. So uh, we were working on uh, uh, creating this uh, crazy uh, experiment uh, with Parmigiano Reggiano, and uh, one of them was uh, to create a dashi of Parmigiano Reggiano, Japanese style. We were shaving Parmigiano and pouring water, bringing to 80 degrees, and leave it in a refrigerator for a couple of days. All the pro protein was dropping down. And uh, in the middle, there was uh, like this uh, very acidic, intense Parmigiano Reggiano water that uh, we were using to cook the risotto. And uh, on the surface of this experiment, there was this cream. You know, it was not fat because um, uh, Parmigiano Reggiano is made with skim milk. So it was just a creamy sauce on top that we, is, we were using to finish the, the, the risotto. You know, we were cooking with the broth and finish with the creamy sauce uh, on surface. And uh, uh, we made uh, um, extra virgin olive oil uh, with infusion of black pepper to make cacio e pepe. So at the end of the riso alla parmigiana, there was like, the risotto was so intense because it was absorbing the old broth of Parmigiano, no? Finished with this and, uh, and uh, mixing with uh, extra virgin olive oil and black pepper essence. So it was like an explosion of cacio and, pe and pepper, but in a super white surface that was like a manzoni surface, like a super minimalist. It was amazing. Well, the result was incredible. And uh, in um, October, November, December, yeah, three months, we, we went sold out 360,000 wheels. No one uh, company closed and no one uh, person lost his job. I love how I, I read in an interview with you that you said it wasn't a recipe, it was a social gesture. Exactly, exactly. I, I agree that. 100%. I confirm. Well, was you said a social it. Gesture. <laughs> Joseph Boyce is my inspiration. So uh, a, a sculpture as a social gesture, a risotto, a recipe as a social gesture. You know, you made me just, when you said Joseph Boyce, immediately, you know what I thought of? Casa Maria Luigia. Because I know it opens today. So, aguri. Yes. Um, I, I've, I've been there, I think, but three Sunday, times. Now. Sunday is going to be the first day with a new project. Oh, what's the new project? Brand, brand. Oh, but this is, I didn't announce yet. Oh. So everyone who wants to come to Modena every Sunday from 11 to 4 in the afternoon is going to be brunch cook in a wood burn oven with the new um, smoker that we have in the back. Like we cook as 1,000 1, years ago. Uh, all the most amazing uh, ingredients, most of them uh, are from Maria Luisa. Even is the it... bread uh, is made with flour from Maria Luisa. Will that uh, cotechino flour. be there? Cotechino will be there. Oh my sure. That's like my cotechino favorite. That's yeah, the... under that... cook under the acid. That, that's, that... That's, that's, a, that's a drug, it's addictive. Yes. So, <laughs> Yeah, that's more LSD than uh, all the menu that we are like serving Franciscana right now. Cotechinos, Brizolona, and, uh, and Zabayone. That is like the, the most transforming brunch I've ever had. Yeah. You know, I was, I was just gonna quickly say because I, I love art and I see, is that a Kia painting behind you? Yeah, it's like, it's the master with all the, the, the four uh, bear, little bear. They, they're learning how to paint. The five little bear, they're learning how to paint. The master is painting and the little bear, they're sketching. I, I love how when you talk about food and when you talk, actually when you talk about everything, eventually you, you bring in Joseph Boyce, you'll say it's like a Manzoni painting or you tie it in. And when you go to Casa Maria Luigia, 
for me, it's like living in an art gallery, but that's your house. So it's not, yeah. it's not that hygienic. It's like, you're like fully immersed in art. We, we are like, we really decide to create Casa Maria Luisa exactly as it would be our home. And uh, our project is to give the opportunity to all the people they want to come to Modena to share our life, as we did with Kitchen Quarantine. That was a virtual sharing of our family life. It was not easy, eh? Regal, every day, every day for seven, two more, more than two, 75 service we did. Me and Alexa with iPhone, we were like, at the end we did it, but it wasn't easy. But we had this kind of incredible joy and we feel, felt the responsibility to bring joy into the, the, uh, the homes of the people. The same way you're, you come to Maria Luigia and you feel you are, you are in our home, sharing our own art, the art we love the, the most, our own music, our own food, uh, our own life. So you, we, feel, uh, we feel that we have, uh, 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 we want to have this kind of approach to create a, a revolution in hospitality. I think, I think you guys actually succeed. And I, you know what, I just started to realize that, you know, you use the word revolution, which brings us back to the Beatles. Yeah. And you can go to Casa Maria Luigia and we can, I could probably find that vinyl. There is. There is. Is, is, there. is, the, is, it, is it at Casa Maria Luigia? But look, look, there's a, there's a dish. It is called uh, Summer is Coming. Uh, and it's like crumble with yogurt foam. Um, no, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This is this. In the sky without Lucy. Look, in the sky without Lucy. So, and it, it's Joseph Boyce. Uh, yeah, roasted peaches, so it's Casa Maria Luisa, uh, blueberry sauce, then uh, oak syrup, uh, rosemary ice cream, rosemary, and uh, pa um, um, uh, come si dice loro? laurel powder. So it's, it's are the four points uh, that Joseph Boyce believe uh, are they have to be in every single garden or park in the world. So oak, longevity, uh, laurel, the glory of the emperors, uh, rosemary, fecundity, everywhere, and roses. You don't have to get lost into the everyday life. Because if you get lost into the everyday life, you're lost. If you pay attention to your life, you don't get uh, stuck into the roses because they're gonna pump, uh, they're gonna pinch you even if they're dead. So these four uh, points are the major points in Casa Maria Luisa. So Lara created this uh, incredible collection of roses with uh, 12 bicentenary oaks, with a long, uh, you know, uh, laurel, uh, you know, wall, and uh, you have rosemary everywhere. So this is, a, this is, a, and boys always remind you in defense of nature on the tennis court. That's cool. So that's, that's what it is. And Lucy in the sky, and the plate is like covered by this uh, sugar, you know, uh, cloud. Uh, blue sugar cloud that uh, is like reminds you how beautiful the the weather is uh, right now after three months of lockdown you know a lot of people there there's so many people that have that are listening in right now and they've sent in a lot of questions so i Ooh. have looked through a bunch and is it okay if i ask you a few yeah of course, of course. okay great well we have sudi from the united kingdom and the question Sudi, is Sudi Pigan. yes oh he's a friend of mine He's a journalist. He's a very good journalist. You know, we are friends since long, long time. Well, she is asking, is Sudi a she? She. Okay, good, because I, I, I didn't know. Are you thinking about a dish suitable to suitably mark this pandemic? And what music do you listen to to cheer yourself up? 
Oh, but that, uh, this is the this is the response, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we have uh, we have uh, you know, it's not just losing that, that. You know, this kind of music uh, now they're playing uh, in the in the kitchen all the time. It's not just uh, uh, we made a playlist about the Beatles that is not just focused on uh, with the um, on Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Art Club Band, but there's like more than that, you know. Um, you know, for example, there are songs like A Day in a Life that to me is one of the most beautiful songs and is the, the song that reminds you not to get lost into the everyday life. And uh, is also a, uh, the name of the plate that is the second course. You know what it is? A piece of bread. The most amazing bread you can imagine. Uh, because our baker with uh, Mirko and uh, bakers, Mirko and Michele, they work together in uh, during quarantine and uh, they create this uh, bread that is like a uh, mille foglie um, and it is like uh, nuts full of nuts so they do like uh, nuts and then they put it together and they bake it on like it, as it was uh, like uh, a dessert but it's like savory with the honey on top of the honey from Casa Maria Luisa and uh, crystal salt the most amazing sweet soul. So mm. it was so good, so good that I said, I cannot serve this as bread. If you get, you know, this is undervalued, the work of these bakers, because this is the most amazing bread I ever taste. So uh, to me, is a day in a life. Okay. Now we have another question from Daniela Perroni in Italy. Yeah. And she, Hi, wanted, she wanted to know, Come ti hai cambiato l'esperienza appena vissuta? So how did this experience change you? That you, that you how, how, how did this change you? Uh, I don't think... Uh, Parlo in inglese o in italiano? Italiano. Ah, inglese. Facciamo in inglese. Ok. Va bene, Daniela, parlo inglese. Dopo non mi scrivete come Kitchen Quarantine. Please speak Italian, no? Ok. So, uh, cambiato, non credo che mi abbia cambiato. Uh, we, we got better, better, better and better. Like this, uh, this idea of uh, having my sweetie pie close to me all this time and, uh, and Monk uh, and, uh, uh, you know, Lara and Charlie and the uh, pyjama and uh, Monk, uh, you know, it's like we never experienced this because since... Uh, you know, it was like, since we got married, 1995, we were like by ourselves and we were like working all the time, all the time, you know? Um, and uh, this experience was like, we got closer and closer and we were able to rethink and to re-give new energy to all our passion. That's why, that's why you know, uh, I think this menu that we create, for example, this is an example. Uh, the menu that came out from uh, the quarantine is uh, probably the most uh, interesting uh, menu that we ever did in Osteria Francescana. Uh, I always think that in our future, there will be always future. So these are just uh, doors open for the unexpected. We walk in, the unexpected of the COVID arrive. We walk in with all our positive energy and uh, we came out uh, as better people. You know, that actually answers Mandy from Canada's question. So that's amazing. I, it's almost like you're a mind reader. Um, <laughs> so then I'm gonna ask you the last question. It's from Linda Ponsabi from New Zealand. Li uh, not Linda Cantu, okay. N no, Pon Ponsabi, Ponsabi. Oh, okay. I, um, she wanted to know if you would ever consider going to New Zealand to explore. No, we already, you know, I know that she watched Kitchen Quarantine because if she asked a question like that, she watched Kitchen Quarantine. We had, uh, you know, I met uh, Jacinda Arden the first time uh, at the, um, in September in New York at the United Nations uh, Congress, uh, you know, for the 15 goals, uh, blah, blah, blah. And uh, to me, was the most inspiring uh, um, speaker. She was amazing. 
And I said to him, I said, so uh, during Christian quarantine, uh, we dedicate uh, one episode uh, to New Zealand and to amazing flavors. One, uh, this is another news that no one knows yet. Uh, so uh, we had uh, the most amazing lamb, uh, wine, uh, salmon, uh, kiwi, whatever. They deliver so much food. But the most amazing thing was this manuka honey. This honey that is like the most beautiful, tasty, deep, uh, incredible honey that uh, you know I could experience. So we made this uh, creme caramel uh, that uh, was like probably the best, uh, the best creme caramel I ever tasted in my life. Starting from there, uh, we broke the old border between sweet and savory because manukani is not sweet at all. So we use uh, we we put it in a, in the menu uh, in a in a dish called in and out of style as a, a the, as a, we create this uh, creme caramel with manuka honey but also foie gras. So we it's like after the pigeon there's this uh, uh, thing that is a prep that looks like a, a foie gras saute but it's just a creme caramel with manuka honey, salt, and uh, uh, the um, apricot, uh, burn apricot in the wood burn oven in Maria Luigia uh, that gives this sweetness, but also burning flavor to add uh, to, uh, to this creme caramel is just out of this world. So back to the question. Uh, yes. Uh, I think uh, one of the next uh, traveling, uh, when uh, we, we, could, we, we will uh, be able to travel, is going to be New Zealand. Well, I, I think one of the next traveling that all of us should do is actually come to you and try the Manuka honey. Because I've heard that Manuka honey also is like, it, it's like the solve. It cures many I things. Can the manuka honey that is over. Manuka honey. So I wanted to let everybody know um, that Austria, Austria Francescana is open. It's open. Um, we're all excited. And that's the, that's the Manuka. It's so funny. My friends from Australia, who usually don't say anything, they're, you know, they're very distant about New Zealand. They always talk about this honey. They say it's, it's unbelievable. amazing. Unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. To me, it's unbelievable. And this is the proof that me, as uh, whatever I am, uh, but you, you know, I keep my eyes and ears always open to the unexpected. And this time uh, I was mind blown by this honey. And uh, you know, it's very difficult to surprise me in flavor with flavors, but this honey is unbelievable. Unbelievable, really unbelievable. Well, I just wanna, I wanna let everybody know that Satopia has the beautiful four day experience with you next year yes. in Modena. Yes. And yeah. at Casa Maria Luigia, which if anybody's interesting, sorry, if anybody's interested, because this is very interesting, they can go to satopiatravel.com and find out all the information, um, 2021. I want to just invite everybody who is here to come to Modena, to come to Casa Maria Luigia, to come to Astria Francescana, Franceschetta as well. I hear there's a new menu, Alexa was telling me. Every, 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 in every place we, we open, you know, I told you. Next Sunday, we're going to open the brunch in uh, Maria Luigia, and it's going to be out of this world. So it's like Maria Luigia is not just about that, because the, you experience the breakfast in Maria Luigia. And, you know, like you can go upstairs, get some balsamic vinegar from our barrels and uh, put finish your breakfast with balsamic vinegar and this frittatina with a sweet onion cook in a wood burn oven that is like to die for you know that's amazing i that's like it's a lot and, it's and, a and there's news there's another news Ooh. there's a playgrounds for adults that we are building me and lara and the, all our guys in which we're gonna put together a beautiful gym a spa but also fast cars fast bike and uh, you know the playground for adults. So 
Oh, that's going to be so exciting. I can't more wait. More and more, you know, uh, fun. Well, thank you so much to, that was my husband. He said, he says no hi husband. too. <laughs> no husband. Thank you so much to Satopia. Um, we really had an amazing conversation. Thank you for organizing this. And I just want to take a second out. One of the things that you said, you just said it, you said you always keep your eyes and ears open to the unexpected. And I think that's one of the things that has inspired me in the past eight years that I've known you because I, it's, a, it's, a, it's a positivity. And like I said before, it's infectious and you're a virus, but you're the kind of virus that I really like having. So thank you. We have to, we have to. It's our responsibility to do this, especially in moments like this. I agree. I agree. Well, thank you for your time. I oh, hope oh, everyone... guys, remember, you have to come, eh? I wait for you in Modena. It's the but it's like it's the most amazing place, countryside of uh, Emilia Romagna. It is so beautiful, and you're always there. That's the, that's the best part. Yes. <laughs> well, thank you again, and thank you so much for your travel. Ciao. 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 Yeah.